Good morning, beautiful people. I am altitude drunk and feeling fantastic. Just had apple pancakes and garlic omelet and uh, ready to hit the road. We're talking high altitude today and we're gonna try to do some high altitude photography if we have energy. And we have like this little machine that reads oxygen levels and it reads like heart rate and stuff like that. So we're gonna do a test this morning. Generally anything over 70 means you're okay. Anything in the 70, 80 range means you might need altitude sickness pills. And anything over that, you're cruising. So we're gonna test this thing out. Greg? <laughs> Uh oh! <laughs> turns out I'm dead. What happened? Uh, it turns out I'm dead. I'm dead. Yeah, I'm about to do that. Oh, I turned. Oh, I turned it off. That's all that happened. Okay, we're checking my um, my oxygen levels and my heart rate. 92, which is great. The heart rate's high, but I was just walking at altitude. So anything over like 70 or survivable. 90 over 96. I'm good. I don't need altitude drugs. Woo How are you feeling? I'm not feeling like this thing's wrong. <laughs> Cause I feel way worse than it's reading. <laughs> I think I'm less than 92. We got the drums in the background. Yeah, it's good vlog music. All right, here we go. Okay. Oh, you're dead, Greg. It's not reading. Oh, 86, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, oh, 91. 91. Jackpot. Yeah. After reading our digits and doing our usual awkward stretching routine, we hit the trail. The destination today, 4,900 meters above sea level. The mode of travel, wings. What are you drinking? Red Bull. It gives you wings. <laughs> no, I've been packing it for two days and I forgot I had it. I'm like, I'm carrying all this extra weight, I might as well drink it. Ah, oh, delicious. There's nothing quite like drinking 0.3 kilos of weight. If only camera batteries got lighter as they drained, we'd all be flying. How's the altitude, Greg? Doing good. Just trying to conserve my energy until we hit the pass. Sorry, the, the switchback part. That really hard part at the end of today, that one. Do you want to switch uh, packs with this guy? Uh, no. I'm going to keep mine. Smart move. Uh, morning's going pretty good so far. Uh, we're at like 43.5, so we've gone up 150 meters. We've got a bit of a switch back to do here uh, to get towards Fetty, which is where we're gonna stop to have lunch, but things are going good. I've been trekking all day with my 24 to 70. I haven't packed my tripod today because there haven't been a whole lot of tripod situations over the past couple of days. I gave that to the porters. Sorry, porters. And basically on a day-to-day -day basis, I've been going back and forth between using my 24 to 70 as kind of my walk around lens and my 15 to 35. But I've been feeling like the farther we get up the trail, the more I like the 70 millimeter images of hikers on the trails or porters on the trails or, or stuff like that. So yeah, 24 to 70 has kind of been my walk around. It's what I'm vlogging on right now as well. And that's all I got to say about that. Remember just a couple days ago when we were in the jungle? Well, as we pushed to Fetty, not only are we up out of the tropical zone, but now we're above the tree line. It's hard to believe it's even the same country. Oh, we made it to Fetty. We're at 4,500 meters, and there's a howling wolf dog. I'll call him Greg. <laughs> we're at 4,500 meters. We've got to go up there, straight up that pass. That's another 400 meters up to get to high pass, but we're gonna spend, uh, I think probably at least an hour, probably two here in Fetty to try to get a little bit of wind and acclimatization and just check how everybody's doing with their oxygen levels. So yeah, still a long ways to go, but I think we're doing pretty good. What's for lunch, Brennan? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
lunch has been smashed and uh, we all checked our oxygen levels again. Everybody's good. A couple of people around 70, but still good. Magically, I don't know how I'm still at 90 because I definitely don't feel like that. But um, we're going to climb up this big mother photographer right now. 333 meters straight up over one kilometer. It's going to be brutal. <laughs> and it was brutal, believe me. But honestly, I'm feeling strong, empowered, and like I can take on anything. It's amazing how quickly the body can adjust to the strains of daily hikes and altitude. We're definitely all feeling a little bit braver than we were when we started this thing about a week ago. Nearly half in there. What's up? Ah, nearly half in there. How you feeling? Good, actually. I'm tired, but ready for a nap? We're good. Better than I expected. How you feeling, Gregoire? Hey. How you feeling? Hey, good, man. Feeling real good. You think we're there? Yeah. Four nine? No, four eight five, but basically four nine. Yeah. No, I'm feeling good. I think tomorrow will be a piece of apple pie. <laughs> you're gonna regret saying that. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, you're gonna cry. Knock tomorrow. on wood. I might cry at the summit. We should get a selfie. Nah, Greg. No selfies. I'm too self-absorbed. So here's my face instead. We made it, 4,900 meters. And actually we kind of flew up that, probably faster than we should have. Took us only an hour. Um, yeah, we're here. We're going to probably take a well-deserved nap. And then there's a viewpoint 5,000 meters up. Well, 100 meters up from here. But at 5,000 meters, I think we're gonna go head there for sunset, so break time. Oh man, I could really use some oxygen. Well. Is the going up. I want okay. more altitude. This is home sweet home for the night. Six people in this giant accommodation. <laughs> you get the wide angle lens on? Yeah. Looks oh. awesome. Oh yeah. Shark gun cuddling with exactly. Max. After a quote unquote team building cuddle nap, we tried to push ourselves a little bit higher. Every hundred meters of elevation gain makes the next day easier. Apparently. Oh, and these clips aren't slow-mo. You legit walk this slow at altitude. We haven't arrived. It was a, a battle <laughs> to get up here, um, but we're here. And I was planning on shooting sunset here, but I'm so lightheaded right now and it's cold and I'm full of excuses because of altitude, and I just don't feel like shooting sunset. So I think we'll probably take a couple of photos right now. It looks nice, um, probably at 24 to 70. I hope at 24 to 70, because it's the only lens I brought up. But yeah, it looks nice. And uh, yeah, so a couple photos to remember this, this experience, and then we gotta get some sleep, because we're gonna be up at like three o'clock tomorrow morning to make the pass. The pass, I'm not sure if you can see, but it's like, it's that back there and it looks scary. It turns out that scary bit I was just pointing at is just the tip of the iceberg. But I'm actually quite glad I didn't really know how tough the next day would be. There's nothing more comfortable than sleeping in a blanket of naive bliss. It's 3.30 in the morning, just woke up here at high camp, and uh, when I say woke up, that's an exaggeration, the alarm went off, but I didn't sleep at all last night, I haven't slept in like four nights. Um, we we're crossing Thralong La Paz, which is 5,412 meters. In the dark, we crawled. Worried? I took a Diamox tablet. Too late, I know, but I hope the placebo effect would help guide me up the pass. What's our altitude, bud? Uh, 5100 I think. Yeah. Time? Uh, 526 in the morning. This morning I woke up scared. I was dizzy, nauseous, and about two or three times I fought the urge to puke. Before our tea break stopped, I actually thought I wouldn't make it. And I wasn't the only one struggling. Altitude is so bruising. And it doesn't discriminate. In fact, 
I think it hit some of the most athletic people in our group the hardest. It was cold too. Our fingers were all numb. It was easy to miss the humid bliss of the jungle that just seems so far behind us now. But as the sun started to kiss the peaks around us, it lifted our spirits and it helped us push along the way. Even if my occasionally swaying steps don't show that. How's this high altitude <sighs> photography working out for you, bud? Well, I've taken three pictures. And that's it. I've got snot all over my face, my beard is frozen. But I think we're almost there. <laughs> Sometimes altitude just makes you do things like that. I need water. Oh, it's frozen. <laughs> Look at the ice. It's like mostly ice. <laughs> I just switched lenses because GPS says we're over 5,400 meters and my eyes tell me there's a bunch of prayer flags ahead and potentially a building. I'm super lightheaded, but I think we're here. And now I have no energy left. Oh, oh, I'm gonna puke. Ah, oh, Greg, get in here. Oh, get in here. Oh, get in here, Maxi Max. Ah, oh, J Dog. Shauna. Oh, I'm dead. Woo! Yeah, motherfucker. Five thousand four hundred and sixteen meters. We made it. It's hard not to get emotional. Oh, I just take a step away. I had a feeling this was going to be emotional, but bringing a tear to my eye. Oh, special. It's like so empowering to punch through that much, you know, when you're that out of shape. <laughs> and yeah, it was hard, but we made it. And it's just like this feeling that you can't explain. It's so good. And to be with a group of dudes we're with, just it's so special to have that camaraderie. Yeah, there's no words. I can't, I can't talk about that. I just can't explain how good this feels, how emotional this feels. <sighs> yeah, special moment in a really, really special place. I don't want to do it again tomorrow, <laughs> but yeah, well worth it. Yeah, well worth it. Later that night, I asked my group if this was the hardest thing they ever put themselves through physically. Seven out of 10 said yes. It was brutal. Brutal, but also life-changing. And for me, though obviously it was hard physically, it was the mental battles that I'll remember the most. I lost four kilograms hiking this trail, but it was the mental and emotional gains that were the most rewarding. And as we pranced down a nearly 1.5 kilometer altitude drop on the other side of the pass, I spent a lot of time trying to reflect on the journey and hopefully putting some of those thoughts to words. Okay guys, uh, I just want to talk about the pass a little bit more because when I was up on the pass, it, it, I was really emotional, but I didn't know why. And I didn't know how to explain what I was feeling because I probably didn't really know what I was feeling. So it's been a couple days, I've kind of let things marinate, I've thought about how you know I felt, and I've thought about how I can explain that to you. And it 
I think about the Toronto Raptors. I think about my beloved Toronto Raptors. I've been a Toronto Raptors fan since they came into the league. And as everybody should know, we're now the world champions for the first time ever. And I remember watching the championship game. And I remember being focused on the players' faces when they won. I remember specifically looking at Kawhi Leonard's face and thinking how excited he must be, how happy he must be, how, much, how prideful he must be. And I remember watching his face and being surprised by what I saw. I remember when the game was won, his face didn't say joy or pride or empowerment or anything like that, like I was expecting. It showed relief. It was like relief just washed through his body. It was like, yes, we no longer have to do that anymore. We did it. And it's a weird feeling and that's exactly what I felt on the pass. When I got there, it was joy. But more than anything, it was relief. It was like this, this great mission finally came to an end and it was like this weight off your shoulders. And I'm not comparing like a, a hike up a 5,416 meter peak to winning an NBA championship, but it's, it, it's that same feeling, I think. It was that relief and I was really surprised to have that relief rather than joy. And for me, as I mentioned in the hero video that I posted at the start of this, uh, this series, I've been stressing about this pass for months and months and months. Not only me climbing it, because I don't really care about me. Like if I don't make something, I just turn around and go back, whatever, no big deal. But I was responsible for 11 other people. And because I was responsible for 11 other people, it was like this it was like this weight on my shoulders because I can't control whether they go over the pass. I can't control how their body reacts to altitude. I had no control over that and it was something that was causing me so much stress and I didn't even realize how much stress I was carrying until I hit that pass and that relief washed over me. And it was a really amazing feeling. It was really it was really truly incredible. I can't Again, I've been sitting here talking about this forever, but I can't really truly explain how good that felt. I will say this, over the months leading up to the trek, I definitely did the classic making a mountain out of a molehill situation. The only difference is that I made a mountain into a way bigger mountain. And the more you stress about something, the bigger it gets. And when that big thing is already big, it just gets so big that it feels impossible. And so for the months leading up to this trek, I kind of like, I just looked at this pass like it was the biggest thing ever, like the biggest hurdle ever. And it was hard and definitely getting towards the top, it was, it was, ener it was exhausting. <laughs> but kind of like dealing with anxiety and stress in general, with the pass, you kind of just got to take it one step at a time. You just got to think to yourself, one foot in front of the other and everything will be okay. And that's kind of how it worked out. And it was kind of like an analogy or a lesson learned for stress or anxiety in general. It was just one foot in front of another, we'll get through this. And we got through it. And I'm so proud of the guys. I'm proud of the 10 dudes that came along with us. Everybody made it over the pass. Uh, I'm really proud of Greg because Greg crushed the pass and he had tons of camera gear and he managed to capture every moment. So massive shout out to Greg for, for capturing that all and for yeah being an awesome teammate. And uh, yeah, I think that's all I got to say on today's episode. So I'll see you guys on the next one. We still got two or three videos left from here in Nepal. See you later. Peace.